Okay. Um, Parsha's Truma. The, okay. Today's Parsha from the Kamarna is... Uh, the Kamarna in general is the, a very gripping, safer... He has an approach which is unbelievable. And today's Parsha from the Kamarna especially is... Uh, it gives you a pretty, a, a much clearer idea of what in the world is going on in the building of the Mishkan. When you read about the Mishkan, you see it seems to be very repetitive. We have it in Trumo, we have it in Vayakel. What, what's going on? You keep again and again and again. All the details. Why, why, why are you telling me again and again? What purpose does it serve? Okay, so people who know will say, what do you mean? What purpose does it serve? Look in the Zohar. There's a whole body. But Vayakla has a lot to, this is a tremendous amount of Zohar. Like the Zohar has a lot to say there. Vayakla, Pikude, these, these, these details, the true Muslim, there's a lot of Zohar on these Zinyanim. Well, what are you talking about? You look in the Zohar. There's differences in each Indian. But the Kamana is, is he learns from the Zohar and he, he, he takes his own beautiful way. He explains, he gives us a basic idea of also what seems to be very confusing, which is that, on the one hand, the Jewish people, we say, okay, Moshe, thank you, we heard these dibbas, we're done. We want to hear you, God will talk to you, you'll talk to us. We can't do this anymore. On the one hand, we find that that was very good. Hashem's like, oh, wow. They should always feel this way. On the other hand, it wasn't so good. We, 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 we fell, we, what happened? Like, what? It's not so clear, Like, it's very unclear, like, was it positive? We shouldn't have. We were positive. We should have. We shouldn't have. What, what was going on? What were we saying? And what was happening? What was good about it? What was bad about it? So he's very clear about what's going on. He's very clear about why there are two um, accounts of the Michigan and the Kalim, like what's going on. So he, he, he has a wondrous, incredible, like it, it, just the shot, even understanding what's happening. He gives it like a clear, instead of the Zohar, like every detail, what is this or what is that? He raises it from the Zohar also, but like he's, he's saying like, very straightforward. What did we gain? What? what are, why are the two accounts? What are they? What are they telling me? So he explains that the first Mishkan, Truma. He said yes. Physically, to build the Mishkan was only after the sin of the ego, but the way he understands, we were supposed to also build a Mishkan before the Chet Ego. Just a very different Mishkan. That's what he says. He says, listen. Okay, he says, listen. He says, Adam Arishan, before he fell in the garden, he was a kind of in-between stage. He was going up. He didn't have regular Yitzhahara. His Yitzhahara was external completely. But he was, the world was moving up. If he'd only left things alone and done what he was supposed to do, everything would have been fine. He didn't do that. So what happened? He fell, and the Yitzhara came inside. Moshe, he was, there was a revelation of the, the Ten Commandments, right? Moshe Rabbeinu, when we heard from Hashem directly, he was bringing us up in one shot, skipping the level of other Mauritian, saying, you don't need that. You're going to go right up, be in a place where the next world is, not only is Yitzhara external, it has nothing for you at all. Zero. You can't bring a party, you're done. Done with everything. That's what was happening. So the Jewish people said, no, no, we want to be like Adam was in the garden. Let's have a middle stage. We can't do this so fast. It's, it's gut-wrenching. Every, everything, they, everything they heard, they're, they're dying, they're coming back. <laughs> it's not an easy thing to deal with. So like, it's like well, let's, we'll get like Adam in, in Gadeen. Yitzhar is external, not internal. And then we'll go up. So Hashem's like, okay, that's good in a way. That's good if you want to go up slowly. But... Then when we fell in the, in the sin of the ego, so we lost that, just like other. We went back down. So we didn't lose everything. We had it. Uh, the Gemara of the Zohar is very clear that we got at least something. Zohar also. It's not that we didn't lose everything. It, 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 it did uh, diminish the connection of uh, a Jewish soul to evil in a certain way. It did certain things. Nevertheless, we didn't hold on to it. So 
when we protested, it was the more normal thing. As a way, we're taking stages. It was more normal. We're, we're, we want to be like Adam Mauritian, and Moshe will be wherever he is. So at that point, when, when we were at that Adam, so now says, Hashem's like, okay, so you have to build a Mishkan. You don't need to build anything physical. You have to become a Mishkan. All these things represent things in a person. That's your job. You're building a spiritual Mishkan. Because the world is, is the, external, the, the external aspects of the world don't talk to you anymore in the same way. So you're going to build a Mishkan by connecting, by doing what you're supposed to do, all of these things spiritually. So then we failed. We fell down. So when you fell down, she was like, oh, now you have to build it physically and try to access those levels. So, so again, another accounting. But this account is, is building a physical manifestation which will hopefully enable us to, to connect however we're supposed to connect. That's why he says that's why he says it twice. Which is like pretty mind-boggling. When I learned this, I just couldn't believe it. I was so riveted. I was like, oh, this is like unbelievable. He's right. I don't really know. You know, everything's Kabbalistic. You know, but he's like, well, he's very, very clear about what it is and how it is. It's like unbelievable. So that's how the Kamarna explains it. He says there are different levels, different in Yonim. He said there's these, these 39 Malachas, the 30 Malachas, the Mishkan, there were, there were different levels and how to do it. Like other in the garden, he didn't have to do anything. He just access things to unifications was on a level a very very high level where you saw things the way it's supposed to be um and that's where we were and we fell we lost it we fell away okay accessing the first mishkan that is a very good question can we today access the first aspect of the mishkan we're supposed to we're, we're working on it we're trying but Let's put it to you this way. Um, the more we always we are always accessing the first Mishkan. Every good thing we do is 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 adding to it. But the more we realize that we're in the dark in a positive way, the more we're gonna access. Like there, it's a possibility, it's possible for a person to live his whole life. His thoughts are only on the material world, his heart's only in the material world. That's it, more or less. So, you know, I mean, he looks like he's going through, he might even be going through all the motions, doing all the davening, doing everything, learning, going to stuff for Yomi, whatever. And uh, he's got no content. The real content is exceedingly loud. Like, to the, it's, it's just completely like, it's a blank. 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 So we don't want to be a blank. We want to be someone who's really connected. We want to have a, a mind, my mind, I want to be filled with good thoughts, thoughts of Hashem, thoughts of how can I do good things, how can I, 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 I fix the world, in whatever way my, what is my contribution. My heart, I want my heart to be on fire for Hashem, not for stupid things. So it's like, it's, 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 it's not so simple. So the more you realize, how do you get that? So like, very nice. I want to have my mind thinking good thoughts. I want to have my heart on fire for Hashem. How do I do that? How do I do that? I want to do it. So the, the, the Kelmer, the author of Kelmer, is like very interesting. He says, David Melch says to Hashem, it's, he says a prayer to, to uh a prayer to to write a prayer to Bimara. A prayer. David said a prayer in the cave. So he said a person who's wise understands that there are a lot of things he's in the dark about. He realizes he's he's in the Mara. In this aspect, I'm in the dark. He's just to search. Hmm. How can I get out of the dark in this way? He said because you know if you take a person who's ignorant who knows nothing, you take a person who knows everything. There's no difference. There's a story of the Balatanya. The Balatanya was once at a wedding. Now the Balatanya was very sharp. And he was very connected. So it was a bad thing. It was a really good The guy was making jokes, right? Everyone he made fun of. Everybody. He said some grammar, some like rhyme, some like to like make him a good laugh, a little, you know, a little uh, bar, like some. He was very, very good. Great. Everyone's laughing their heads off. But the person he skipped over, who do you suppose he skipped over? The Balatanya. He's afraid. Talking about the Balatanya? Make a joke about the Balatanya? What are you kidding? Like he's mom, he's like, he's just uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know what will happen there. That's like a dangerous, it's like stepping on a landmine. Will it go off? Won't it go off? I'm not stepping on that. So when he finished about time, he said, hey, you skipped me. What about me? So he was very clever. He said, I wasn't going to say anything, but if you're asking, he said, I was thinking, what's the real difference between me and you? What's the difference? He said, okay, you know so much. You know so much and I know nothing. He said, but compared for what there is to know, you also know nothing. Because there's so much. And then the Balatana started to cry and the and the, the Balatana started to cry. He knows now that he is. But like we all understand that the Balatana, the Balatana, yes, 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 very nice. But the Balatana was in the highest place. The Balatana was, man, I don't know where he was exactly. But not quite in the highest place of the Balatana. Let's put it that way. It was very clear. So it's like, 
we, 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 the difference between an ignoramus and a person who knows, he said, it's not, we, we both are missing the knowledge, but you have to be seeking the knowledge and moving forward towards it. When a person wants, when you feel in your heart, you want to learn, you want to connect. It says, it says you are a chacham. Rabbi Yonah says, you are a chacham. He brings from, uh, he brings from the chacham agayim. He says, the non-Jewish um, wise people say, in others, they say that a person who seeks, he loves wisdom, he wants wisdom, he's already wise. Because that's what he, that, that's how you become wise. That you'll get whatever you can get if you want, if you're yearning, if you're seeking, if you're searching. Oh. So now, that's the that's this Indian of uh, that's this Indian of uh, how do I build the base of How would I build the Mishkan? How do I do it in my life? The more I'm moving forward, the more I'm striving, the more I'm moving, the more I'm building. That's also the morale. I always say this beautiful morale from uh, the right thing in morale. I think it's in Shabbos. Rabbi Loza says, uh, I'll die on the way to doing a mitzvah. I'm going to go on the way. So I always say, you know, like, hey, and it's, and it's obvious, you know, just the morale is like, is that the shlemas? That's the completion? Oh, he was on his way. Almost made it. Like, you can imagine the Leviah. Well, he was on the way to the mitzvah and he almost did it, but then it didn't quite work out and he died. Oh, very good. That's what, uh, that's, what, that's what he's asking for. So the morale says, no, he says, when you're on your way to do something, you're one with where you're going to. It doesn't mean one mitzvah. When you do a mitzvah, it's forever, right? And you did it, and you have the mind of the mitzvah, and then you move forward. But, but when you're on your way to the mitzvah, you're, 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 you're in love with Hashem. You're in love with Hashem. The, the, the word ahavam is the same mantra as echad. You, it's one. You're one with Hashem now. You're on the way. You're one. You're, you're in union with Hashem. That's how we wanted to be. I'm on the way. That's, I want my whole heart, my whole self to be filled with a desire to, to, to connect to Hashem. That is called building the mishkan. That's why, again, the Adveno Libo... A lot of farm bring this idea of like you want maybe we're a tzaddik. I don't know. We'll see the tzaddik in a minute, maybe. But like you want, what can you give Hashem? He needs the gold. He wants you want to give and sacrifice and give to Hashem. He wants a person who's gonna uh, over. He's so yearning for Hashem. He says, "I don't care about the material even. I'll pay. I don't care." That's what the Zohar says. If you don't pay, it's not worth anything. If it's not worth anything, if you don't pay. You pay. You, want, you have to want to pay. You know. So this is the Indian, it's a very, very good question, and the answer is, however much you know you're in the dark and you're moving forward, that's how much you and or I, or each of us, are building the Mishkan. And that's what he says. He says, every person has the capacity to be very super sensitive. You could be sensitive in a way that you understand that, wow, maybe maybe I, I need to change this way, maybe I need to change that way, maybe I have this problem, maybe if someone says something, you're like, ah, oh, maybe he's talking to me, maybe Hashem's talking to me, maybe this will change, change this, and you're always changing, you're moving, you're moving, you're in flux, you want to grow, and you could use a sense of the opposite, oh, oh, you're insulting me, oh, you met me, ah, you're saying this, ah, you mean this way, you mean that way, there are different ways of how do you use that sensitivity, what do you do with it, the author of Kelm, he actually would, uh, he liked to, um, when he made a drusha, he didn't take any money from the public. When he gave a drusha, he would put a plate with, uh, you know, so people could give collection. So someone saw this. He's like, this guy doesn't take any money from anyone. He does business. He learns eight hours straight or however long. I don't even know. He does business or other stuff to make money. He doesn't take money from the, from the general public. Uh, like, well, why, well, what's the plate doing there? It's not for him. He's just, like stuck on this episode. Indian. It's very weird. You, you think the guy gives for free. He's more altruistic. He's like, you don't understand. People, they're always very sensitive. He said, I have to speak in a way that's going to penetrate to the hearts about what their problems are. <sighs> if, if a guy takes it personally, I'm not going to go anywhere. He's going to be, oh, he, you're insulting me. You're talking to me. So the minute I put out a play, people, it's already very sweet in the situation. Okay, he's some, you know, he's a guy collector. He needs money. He doesn't care what he's saying. Maybe he'll say some good stuff. Hey, he's, he's, he's pushing. He's shifting the money. He needs money. Give him some money, the poor guy. And then go, 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 go on collecting. He said, then when I speak, he said, either it'll penetrate or not, but they're at least open to hearing. Because then it's not personal. I, I got to make sense. I got to sound good. I got I to gotta come up with something because I got to make the money. I got to scramble to make the dough. He said, so, you know, I, 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 so, so they give the money. He said, and when I say, it, it eventually will penetrate. He said, but if I don't put out a collection plate, then they're, they're, they're going to think, oh, uh huh. You're, you're, the, you're, you're talking to me. Oh, you're right. I had that. How dare you speak that way? What is that? What you look like? this way, that way? Again, using the sensitivity, misusing our sensitivity. We're supposed to be sensitive to the needs of other people, and to our own spiritual failings. Not the opposite way. Usually, with the opposite, we say, "He did this wrong. I did that wrong. That one did this wrong." And then for me, well, you know, listen, a very lot of latitude. Supposed to be the opposite. Again, the positive. We have to be very positive. We have to be very positive. We have to be very f focused on Hashem. We're building the Mishkan. The main thing about building a Mishkan is this concept. 
of moving, transforming, fluid, going. When you want, that's what you have. That's what Nuss says. When you want, wanting is free, and what you want, that's what you get. That's where you are. That's you. That's who you are. This are and that's that, that, that's that morale. When you take that morale that, that I just said a second ago, and you understand it in depth a little bit, you, you realize that when a person is dying for Hashem, he might be the freshest person. He knows nothing. He's never kept a shout, but he wants Hashem. He's one with Hashem. You have the guy who knows the shas, the zir, the shukunar, I don't know what he knows. But he's a little crusty now. You know, He's not thinking about Hashem. He wants to, like, uh, like uh, I don't know, uh, convince the board or do this. I don't know. Whatever he wants to do, he has all these ideas of what he wants to do. I don't know exactly. Uh, whatever it is, he wants to do this. He wants to buy, build, buy a house. He's not thinking of the spiritual content of what he's doing. He's not as close as the guy who's dying for Hashem. He's on fire, his heart, his brain for Hashem. Problem is we often cool down. So we get this and then we go back, go back. So last week, uh, so that's what he says. That's the idea of uh, that's the concept of, 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 uh, of a person who is a chasu shalom an or 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 mishakil, right? Someone who can't take in any spiritual. It's an aspect of a person who, who can't have spiritual children. And the aspect of 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 of, of, an, of, of a mishak of a person chasu shalom as a miscarriage is the concept of a person he can't takes it and then loses it. We are all here to make spiritual fruit. That's what we're here for. The main thing is what are you doing? What have you done in the world? How have you affected the world? How are you going to transform the world? How are you going to do what you're supposed to do? That, that's why we're here. So we have to realize everything I do is supposed to be as much as possible, building the Michigan, whatever way I can. And whatever way I can. And not, not sabotaging. And realizing that's important. It's not simple. It's important. I always like to say, you know, uh, take uh, live music, right? And take computer-generated music. What's better? What sounds better, right? I mean, you know, come on. The live music, generally speaking, yeah, it's going to be better. It's real. It has reality to it. You have like some, I don't know, there's some element. Even if you take like old, the same guy even, and he did the same performance, and I love his performance. When you hear him re- live, you're like, it's computer generated, but there's some, I don't know what you'd say, I don't know, some style. He'll change a little. Not only because of imperfection, just he'll do something quirky or interesting. I don't know what. It's going to be like more interesting, more, you know, it's going to be something there because it's a human element. Well, even if you're playing his stuff, it's less interesting. You go, go to the concert. Why? You have uh, 10 discs of his. No, 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 no. He's the best. She's the best. I got to go. That's my best, my favorite, my. Go to see. It's a different story. Why? Because there's the human, the person doing it, that's what it was. The same thing, the Rebbe says the same thing, the Yitzhahara. The Yitzhahara, we, this enables us to do things that are worthwhile. Because we have this human, this tremendous things holding us back. We do, we're doing every little thing, achieves unbelievable things. Why? Because it means something. It says a thousand years of an angel, it means something. Turn on the tape recorder. The tape recorder didn't show any big, oh, wow, the tape recorder, shh, it played. As long as it's powered in the way it's supposed to be. The power's working, if it's working, you turn on the computer, you hit the thing. It's going to play the same way every time. Just don't spill your coffee in it. That's a, that's a, you have certain things. And that's also human. The thing can do this, but it has no meaning. It's not a computer. Wow, my, do you know how great this computer is? It plays the disc. You're like, well, the sound system is the same as mine. I paid the same whatever. Eh, what, big, what big deal. But you went yesterday to that concert. What's up? Here, here it is. I can play it. Every time. It's like, no, a concert is different. It's something about human live music. It's, it's not, you know, it, 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 it's, it's fluid. It's alive. There's something live there. If it's the same game, the same thing. And even if someone's sitting in the next room won't know the difference. Because there's also a concert where it's also live. It's also No, you, you, you know it already. You understand what's going to happen. Here it's something different, something changed. And he says the same thing. A thousand years of an angel service isn't worth one person. He heard it was a shear, he did something, made a bracha. It's worth more than a thousand years angels, the biggest like who cares? That's why um uh, Brisker says he brings that, that we say the angels um, opposite the Jewish people they praise and say he said for an angel to make real praise you need to have a minion of uh, Jews humans you can't, have a, you can't do it without, uh, without the human element that's when the main praise is angel I'll say again yeah, like in the computer hit the thing very good it goes on who cares what does it matter okay you need to have them Shem wants to have them why does he have them he wants to have them it's not clear why and what Angels, angels is its own topic. But like bottom line is that's called building the Mishkan. That's called making a place for Hashem in my heart and my head, like where I am, who I am, what I am. It's supposed to be taken up with spiritual, with Hashem, with connection to Hashem. Right, and that's the Kamarna. Now we'll see a little bit of Tzaddik. 
So it technically explains, yeah. Right. So this is the, this was I, I said a little bit of it already, which is the first thing is that God doesn't need the gold and the silver. Hashem needs what He wants is a, our heart that we should give, be willing to overcome the material world. So. Yeah, the Zora says, "May ace call ish from any person who's on a level of some sort, a shade venu libo, right? That Hashem wants him, right? And his his heart wants, he's desired, so he feels a desire. So Zora says, how do you tell who's the one who really Hashem wants? His heart is like, how do you know if you're really desired? So the main the way to tell is when a person, his rotsen is to go after and, and work to find Hashem. So Hashem is with him. He's in his heart. Why? Because that's, that's how we see Hashem is in his heart. He's willing to even pay money for it. Yeah, and the, the Sefer Bar he brings says that a person's heart his heart desires desire, he wants to separate from the material world he wants a spiritual I want spiritual I don't want material so the mictus in the world is like Shabbos in, in time where you want a separate a day separate a place for Hashem that's what the Zohar says Shabbos is the day of the Neshama not the not the not the body. You're not supposed to be thinking about the material desires. You're supposed to have desire for Hashem. Again, it's rotten. This idea of, of yearning. This idea of wanting. A person wants so much Hashem. He wants Hashem. Okay, so that's from Tzaddik. I will do a little bit of Zohar. The Zohar says, I mean, Truma, the truth is, it's so much. It's just so much. Even more than usual. It's unbelievable. So the person's table. Our table is supposed to be like the Mizbech, in the, like, 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 the, like the Shulchan in the, in the, in the base of Mikdash. Supposed to be like the, like the Shulchan. That's what our table is. That's one thing the Zohar says here. Your table is supposed to be like your, like, like, like the shulchan in the base of Mitosh. Talk the fun shulchan, make it all right. Set up a, a table opposite against my uh, the ones my tormentors. Every person, every person. That's a choice we have. That's a choice we have. We have to fill a table with Torah with positive things. That's one point that the Zohar makes. Talks about the Oregonus also. What is this Oregonus? What is the Oregonus? So this is this Oregonus, there's a hidden light that's separated from the tzaddikim. It says Hashem said let there be light, and there was light. So Biosu says this is the light that Hashem put away for Tzadikim, and he gives it to us the whole world is supported on this light. That's the purpose of the world, to come to this light. Every place where we learn Torah at night. After Chatzos, 
you get a little drop, a strand of kindness of this light. That's this light. You get a little bit of this light. It's beautiful light. It's beautiful illumination. So Moshe couldn't go into the Mishkan because there was a cloud on it. So Zohar here says that was this beautiful light of, that's going to be for Tzadikim in the next world. And they get through. And this light is what renews the creation. Again, the more we learn Torah, the more connected we are, the more we're bringing this light into the world, the more we're doing it. That's why your are says in the stories that every day is another renewal, another revelation. It's a, it's, a, it's a kindness. You have to find that day. It has to be renewed. It has to be created. Every day we all have a choice. We, all have, a, we have to figure out, what am I doing with this day? What's going to happen with this day? I don't want to lose days. I want to fix the days. And it's totally my choice whether I use my day the way I'm supposed to, whether I don't, whatever I do, I have to make sure that my heart and my head is with Hashem. That's one of the big problems with people. When you're involved in what we call hakira, right? Our sages say don't be involved in hakira, like uh, um, speculation. Being involved in speculation, you can easily forget and lose connection to the reality. Where's my heart? Am I with Hashem? Am I with my head? You lose it. You can lose lose vital emuna. Emuna is a very important thing. That's what the Chavetz Chaim, the Eth Chavetz Chaim, should I learn? Uh, his son was learning more the guy perplexed. First of all, if you're not perplexed, presumably it's not for you, as uh, as uh, the Beis Halevi would say. But he was learning the, the guy from, from perplexed. He saw him two times. One time, another time, he said, "Don't learn that safer. It's not for you." Third time, he saw him learning. He took it away. So the son said, "Tati, it's, it's the Rambam. What could be wrong with the Rambam?" The Rambam is like a holy of holies. So Chavetz Chaim said, it's like a, a, a son riding on his father's shoulders. And he starts to say, hmm, does my father exist? Who, how do you know? Who said? He said, the father would be very upset. <laughs> you're on my shoulders. What are you talking about? Am I exist? So the same thing. When, you're, when you feel, when you know, Hashem is there, when you have a visceral moon, a deeper moon, so then you know. So then what's the, what's the speculation? Speculation is very easy to like lose. The person loses track. Of, of, of who he really of, of waking up who he really is. That's why the Vilna says, when you want to find Hashem, not like the Ram, you can't find it through speculation, philosophical speculation, all that stuff is not going to help you. What can help you, the only thing that can help you is learning and, and connecting to what's above this world, above the physical reality. Hashem should help us, be Zoche, we want to be Zoche very, very much to learn and to connect and to be and to make a Mishkan for Hashem. Have a great job.